Hey guys, thanks for coming back to the channel. Today we have a really great interview lined up with someone who understands mental toughness and what it takes to take your life to the next level. How to get over plateaus, how to kind of get unstuck and start getting results where you feel like you've hit a plateau. So we're gonna be hearing from a guy named Patrick Precourt, good friend of mine, longtime real estate investor, also a 17 year rugby player. He's also uh, started his MMA career. He did his first MMA fight when he was 42 years old. So this guy understands what it takes to get over plateaus and overcome things in your life, challenges. And we, know, we all know that we've experienced that in our lives, whether it's in relationships or with financial or, you know, with your business, whatever the case may be. So we wanted to talk about this today and kind of switch it up a little bit from always talking about credit and investing. Today we're talking more about mindset and, you know, how to achieve the goals that you want to achieve. Patrick, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm really excited to be talking about all this with you. Oh yeah, man. Appreciate it, Mike. Thanks for having me on. Excited to, uh, to be on the show today. You know, um, lots to talk about here. Uh, I hear your intro. I'm like, man, I want to meet that guy. He sounds like a good guy. You know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I personally, you know, when it comes to working out, when it comes to business-related things, you know, it took me like a year and a half to get my first real estate done, deal done, and I'm always talking about that on our channel with people because I know it takes a lot of perseverance to get success within your professional life, but it's not all about that, right? We, all, we experience that with relationships, with our family, with you know, going to the gym or getting you know, on a diet or whatever it is to better your life. You, you can easily hit a plateau and kind of feel like you're stuck and you know, it helps to talk about these things and to hear this type of stuff to improve your mindset so that you can attract the things that you want into your life and actually focus on those things. So that's kind of why we're putting this video together. So why don't you give everybody a little background about you and just let everybody get to know you a little bit uh, before we jump into everything. Yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, and I always lead with this, uh, this June will be my 28th uh, year at, uh, being married, wedding anniversary, which I'm very proud of, you know, uh, out of that. Nice. So first, first I'm a wife and a husband, uh, a husband and a, a dad, right? Uh, I have three awesome kids. My boy is 23 years old. My daughter is 21. My youngest daughter is uh, a sophomore in high school. She's 16 years old. So, I, you know, I, so everything I do builds out of that. And in real estate uh, investment space, it's the late 90s and uh, I got heavy into short sale run for about 10 years. We had a big organization doing that. At that time, got into the educational space and kind of what we've done, we're, you know, we're, we're kind of at the foundation of some of the largest education platforms in the U.S. That experience, so my got me into it. it. Opened the door for what I'm into now. One thing I learned in real estate education is that no matter how good your information is, you tell people exactly what to do, how to do it, when to do it, and virtually do it for them, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot still do not succeed in doing it. And the irony in it is that they want the results, they deeply desire the outcome of it. They know how to do it, what to do, but still not doing the work, right? And that that pushed me into the space I'm in now, which is a deep dive into uh, human behavior, understanding why we do what we do, why we don't do what we do, the subconscious drivers that make the decisions every single day for us, right? And then how do we alter that? How do we tweak that? If we, have, if we can understand it and we can turn a few knobs in there, how do we design it so that we start getting the results that we want, right? And that's kind of what I made my life the last 10, 12 years. Uh, that's my focus is Awesome. Yeah, I know I could have definitely uh, used a conversation or two with you uh, over the years, you know, especially when I was first starting out with my real estate investing career. I, uh, I was ready to quit. I was like, man, this is, this is a pain in the ass. Like, I'm doing all this work, I'm, you know, spending extra time after work, before work, um, you know, running this company, trying to, to grow a real estate business on the side and I was having a hard time getting a deal locked up under contract and actually finding a buyer because at that point I was strictly focused on trying to wholesale deals and it took me like a year and a half to actually get a deal under contract and to line it up with a buyer. Um, you know, I know it could happen a lot quicker for some people and I know a lot of people will quit if they go through that and, you know, never get a deal and that's something that we don't want to happen. You know, we want everyone to utilize the information that they've got at their fingertips and get success, right? Gain success, get that deal done, get that business started, whatever it is. 
So, um, you know, what would you say, like, how would you describe um, mental toughness and, you know, in, from your perspective? <laughs> Yeah, so let, let me share a thought. I'm going to answer that question, but I want to do a little context to it, right? Okay. And, and not, I'll be honest, when, when, when I say these words, not every, it's not going to sit well with everybody, and I understand that, but that's kind of the, the spotlight we put on, right? And, and it goes like this, that every single one of us, everyone listening and watching right now, Mike, every single one of us has in our lives exactly what we deserve to the exact degree that we deserve it in our bank accounts and our relationships and our physical bodies right mm -hmm. meaning that uh, yeah the way we choose to live every single day um we get we're, we're the causation and therefore we experience the results of it right and right the mental toughness which we're going to get into is a way to well create different results and we've all heard from day one, right? In order, uh, we've heard the, the three words, we do have, and it just goes in one ear and out the other, but we never stop and think about the idea that in order to have something that we currently don't have, right? We gotta do something that we're currently not doing, which we first gotta become someone that we're currently not. And unfortunately, right. we like to start at the other end. We're like, well, if I can only have this, I can only buy a lottery ticket, win a lottery, be a millionaire, then I could do all this stuff and I'd become this amazing person, including I'd finally be happy. It doesn't work that way, right? <laughs> the start comes with the coming. You say you brought up the question like what is mental toughness, what is mental fitness, right? And that quite honestly has to do with addressing fear. Our ability to operate not without not fearless. And this this runs in like kinda in conflict with a lot of the, like the guru stuff out there, like fearless, right? Now, we'll experience fear every single time we step outside of our comfort zone, every single time exactly. we step into the view, right? And that's that's not a bad thing. That fear actually can be reshaped into a, a, a type of fuel. And right. the mental toughness is our ability to operate in a, um, in a, in a sane oh. way within insane environments high pressure emotional environment where we can still keep our sanity, still stay stay crystal clear on our objectives, do not let it alter our emotions and therefore decisions and then for our actions, right? Mm -hmm. So let me, let me connect these dots for you, right? If I say, hey Mike, would you agree that the way you feel affects the way you think? Yeah, I would I would also think that the oh, way I'm course, thinking is gonna affect right? the way I feel too as well. Maybe even well, first. That, yeah. You're right, well, that's yeah, hold off on that first. But have you ever woken up in a bad mood? Yeah, but it's usually got to do with what you're thinking. I would imagine. I would like think, to believe. Thinking will trigger. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to that in a second. Right? Okay. The way we feel though affects the way we think. We're in a shitty mood, or somebody writes you a bad email, or says something nasty. You know, right. triggers a bad emotion. The way we feel affects the way we think. The way we think affects our decision making, decision making, action taking, action taking results. So now mm -hmm. there's a direct connection between emotions and results. You bring up thinking. Every single thought, and this is it. If anybody's going to take anything out of this conversation, man, we've got to appreciate this. Every single thought has an attached emotion. And that emotion is buried in our subconscious. It's stored, waiting in the hard drive, just sitting dormant. We don't experience it until we think about it. We bring it up out of the hard drive, you know, our conscious, and now we feel the emotion. Now mm -hmm. we're feeling what we're thinking. And this is your 100% correct. So the new thought create, pulls up the emotion, now we're feeling it, and then now that feeling will create another bad thought, and that can snowball right out of control, right? And right. before long, our, the results we're experiencing are nothing more than a reflection of how we're feeling. We're out of control, right? Not cool. And people say, well, what do you do about that? This is where mental problems comes in. And it's not easy to practice, right? And that, that, that emotion could be fear, right? It could be regret, loss, it could be there's so much hate, right? Mm -hmm. There's so many emotions that come into play. Um, but it goes like this. The second that we recognize, right, this emotion that we're feeling now is not healthy with any negative emotion. Now, in a healthy way, it's a unique ability, unlike any other mammal that walks the face of this earth, to stop, pause, Think about what we're thinking about. Appreciate that it's not going to get us the result we want right now. Mm -hmm. Inject a new thought, to your point, a right. new thought that creates 
a new feeling out of the emotion pulls up. But now it's by design, not by chance or, or, or risk anymore. And now we're starting to operate in a state of intention instead of response or reaction to what's going on. Right. Does that kind of make sense when I explain it that yeah, way? Yeah, absolutely. You want to replace those thoughts or those feelings with something that's actually going to lead you towards your goal, right? Just like with the law of attraction, same type of same type of thing. You have to focus on, regardless of how you're feeling, if you're uncomfortable, if you're not feeling that well that day, whatever it is, if you just change your thought process and start focusing more on what you actually want and what you're going towards, um, you know, that feeling of being uncomfortable or that feeling of fear it, you're not going to focus on it, so then you'll end up moving closer towards your goal, uh, whatever it is, whether it's with you know physical fitness or with your business or whatever it is. So I I love what you're saying. I couldn't agree more, and it's really helpful stuff. Like a lot of people don't realize this. You can get stuck in a rut just by the way that you're thinking, and I've personally been there, and I've noticed it. It's it's an ongoing thing too. You know, no matter how long you've known about this mindset stuff, you're still a work in progress. And the quicker you can realize you're going down the wrong path with the way you're thinking and the way you're focusing your thoughts and your feelings, the quicker you can snap out of that and go back towards your goal and continue to like create a life by design that way. So yeah, I definitely like what you're saying. I agree. couldn't agree more. This, this pulls us in the space of emotional intelligence, EQ, versus intellectual intelligence, IQ, right? And from yep. kindergarten on up, right, our schooling system is focused on one thing, IQ. And they mm -hmm. measure us on it by having us take quizzes and tests, and, right? Never do they indulge in the space of emotional intelligence. Now, here's the funny thing about it. You'll appreciate this. Right? That of the top Fortune 100 companies, 80% of the top CEOs rank super high in emotional intelligence, mm -hmm. average in intellectual intelligence. Check that out. <laughs> That's how powerful emotional intelligence is. This is where mental toughness comes into play. In the Navy SEALs, right? and I have uh, spent a lot of time with deep study and understanding how they think. I have a, a very good friend of mine who is a partner in another part of our program. Who's a, he's a 30-year veteran, uh, four years in the Marines, and 26 years in the Navy SEALs. And, uh, he retired as a captain of the SEALs. He spent a lot of deep thought in, the, in this space right here. Mm -hmm. He said one, one of the, the challenges that the SEALs as the, the organization has always been up against, they have not been able to solve for is this. They have such a high attrition rate of, uh, after buds with people that drop out and quit, right? right? That mentally cannot get through it. And they're always asking the question, what is it that allows this small percentage to get through, something like 80 percent of them or something to get through, and the rest drop out. What they figured out, like, is they still appreciate this. It's not how strong they are, how fit they are, their athletic background. That's not the common denominator in those who succeed. The ones who get through have a certain mental fitness, a mental toughness that the others didn't. Hmm. And so then their, their, their question goes along. How do we measure that coming in? And it could be the only way they know of how to measure it is to put them through what they put them through in this week long. <laughs> no week. Put them that, through is yeah. their, that is their measurement. But that's right. the common denominator. And so that basically says to me that any, pretty much anyone can achieve anything if they can develop mental toughness if they can develop uh, emotional intelligence, right? Because you don't have to be the smartest oh, guy yeah. in the room, right? You could be one of the dumbest guys in the room, but like book smart wise, but if you, you, know, if you understand how to respond to things or how to focus on things, you don't have to have all the talent in the world to achieve great things, as long as you have work ethic and you can uh, keep, you know, keep yourself focused on what you want and not deter and not veer off path because things get a little bit difficult or you're stressing out, you're uncomfortable, you might have to do something that's out of your comfort zone with your new business or with a relationship, whatever. And you know that could make you veer off path. But as long as you have that mental toughness, we all have the same opportunity here in this country, especially now with the internet and you know being able to pretty much scale any business. It's all about you know determination, mental toughness. And I couldn't agree more. 
because I'm definitely not the smartest guy in the room, but I've seen it in, you know, with my own life, with you know, the things that I've achieved. It's not because I was like so smart at all. It's not that at all. It's just because I kept on going and pushing. And I, honestly, I think like having, phys having fitness and exercise as a big part of your life, I think it really helps you develop that type of mental toughness, the discipline, the work ethic, you know, that drive to, to push through barriers. Um, so I, I think if people could, you know, just relate that to business and life in general, um, people that think they can't achieve something or they think that they don't have the same opportunity, if they just develop that mental toughness and say, you know what, I'm gonna do it no matter what, I'm gonna just keep moving forward towards that goal, whatever it is, that really is the secret sauce. You don't have to have a degree or a business or be a doctor or whatever it is. You just have to have that perseverance to drive and keep going. How do you develop mental toughness, right? That, that's a, so that, that's, and that's not an unknown. So you look at, you look at intellectual intelligence, IQ, um, it's, it's been long believed that what you're born with is what you're born with. Now, in, as we get to understanding the brain a little more and really the neuroplasticity behind the brain, we're starting to realize that that's maybe not 100% true. We can actually improve upon our IQ, um, but that's still kind of an open, that's an open field of study. Over here, EQ is 100% in our control. It, it's kind of like it's kind of like leadership in and of itself. It's something that's a lifelong study and master. You can always make it better, right? And mm -hmm. part of oh, emotional intelligence has, has two primary sides to it. it: has the one that relates to us, and has the one that relates to others. And on us, it's awareness of our own emotions and then management of our emotions. Over here is awareness of others' emotions and management of them. And at this place, our leadership. So let's just kind of talk about us right now. Biggest fear that stops us from moving forward, stop us, stops us from doing what we know how to do is fear. It will fear. fear. Fear of loss, fear of the mm -hmm. unknown, fear of failure, fear of judgment, which weighs heavy on our shoulders of you all the time. And the, the, this plague of mediocrity, it's like a giant cesspool that, that our country sits in right now, is founded in the idea that the pain of change exceeds the pain of staying the same. The pain of change, which is what's going on in our head, exceeds the pain of the mediocrity that we that we accept staying the same right now. That's why most people will settle for ordinary instead of push for extraordinary. Forget about the information, the knowledge, the expertise, the books, the podcasts, all of that crap, right? That has so little to do with it. It's the willingness or lack of willingness to step outside of their safe space because mm. they can't get through this one threshold that feels too overwhelming. What goes on between these years? Funny little story for you. Right before now, my 42 years old, pretty much everybody that's sane around you is telling you it's not a great idea to get into the fighting ring, you know? Um, right before I walked out, to the cage, or sitting in the locker room, having to be all by myself because another team was out was fighting, right? A guy named Mikey Burnett comes up to me. He's an old school, from back in the days of NHB, no holds far fighting, right? Mm. This, this is like a, uh, a local UFC <clears throat> thing. And uh, he puts his hand on my knees and he leans in and he's square in the eyes with that. And I tell you something right now, it's, it's not going to help you now, but you'll think back on this. You know, that this fight, the fighter that's that they can focus on right now, it was, that's not the fight. Fight's right here, right here, right now. Mm -hmm. Win it in the locker room. That's just the lag effect of this fight here. And that dude, that, that advice has a lot to do with fighting, but has more to do with life, right? right. That fight, we, we wake up every day to that fight. And what I have found is that more times than not, we are unwilling to get bloody in that fight. What I mean by that is, man, somebody's got to get bloodied up, the new you or the old you. And our unwillingness for either one to get bloody, right? We stay right. in our comfort zone, the fight never happens.
That makes a lot of sense. Like there should be, if you're watching this, there should be light bulbs going off, you know, dots are being connected right now. It's, it's literally making a lot of sense for me. I'm, I'm like looking back and seeing, you know, multiple instances where I've basically, um, you know, stopped myself from doing something because of fear. So I'm sure everyone can relate to that. If you're watching this right now, like the video if you can relate to that. Um, but I definitely can. And just like you said, it's like, it's every day, you know, it's, it's not, no one's really perfected it. Some of us have gotten really good at it, um, but it's, a, it's an ongoing fight, you know, it's to, it's to stay focused on what you want without letting the fear take you off path. I couldn't agree, uh, I couldn't agree with you more on that. So what does it take to like close the gap you know, between information and results and like, why is it so hard for people to change? Is there, is there anything like people can do to implement some type of exercise to create that mental toughness? Every, every, every day, brother, every single day, commit to doing something that you'll get a little bloody at. I mean, outside of your comfort zone. Something, something that's gonna make you uncomfortable. Failure. Yeah, where we're failure is probable, right? So okay. not trying to fail, is that you're pushing your limits of what you're currently capable of. You know, so we live in the space of our current capacity, but we have a lot of potential. But potential is like a round chambered in a gun, and it can't do shit sitting there. You don't appreciate its power until it's released from, from, the, from the gun and pull the trigger, right? Mm -hmm. Us sitting in our comfort zone is just like that, that round chambered up. It's sitting there with a lot of potential, worthless until we step it outside of that comfort zone. And that's where we expose ourselves at the same time, right? And when it comes to building this, this mental toughness, this mental muscle up, right? Uh -huh. Bit by bit every day, we gotta step outside and risk and expose ourselves. Sometimes it'll work, sometimes we'll get set back. But the, and I know you know this, the fastest path forward is through our failures. It's not through our successes, it's through our failures. And an unwillingness to fail will keep us forever trapped. It's like, like I said, put it loading around, man, and never pulling the trigger. And you stuck your entire life. So the, the, the simple answer is, go through, no different than going to the gym and breaking yeah. down a muscle. That's right? exactly what I was thinking. Exactly the same thing. And we can advance it pretty quickly. Think about this, and this is, it's almost, I don't want to use the word sad, but it is, it is sad. Think about it as a child, right? At some point in your life, you learn how to ride a bike, right? At the time, though, you were wholly unqualified to do so. You didn't know shit about physics or gravity or momentum or pedaling or speed or balance. You read no books, no, you studied nothing. Your parents did nothing more than push you down the road at best, right? Mm -hmm. And the risk of injury failure was extremely high. And yes, you get bloodied up a little along the way. It didn't stop you because you're so ruthlessly committed to the result of the result. What that means is the result is riding a bike. The result of the result, freedom, dude. You're stepping right. up in your new space. This is where you're, you're manning up when you learn how to ride a bike as a child, right? And that overcomes that fear and all those self-limitations that we put on ourselves. And the difference in thinking between a child and an adult is this. A child gets focused on the end and figures out the means. An adult figures out the means and lets that figure out how far they can go. And by that math, the means being whatever's got you here, that's your means. If you use that math, you can't go any further. You're, you're dead in the water. You see the difference in framing on that? Mm -hmm. That's why the, the learning curve for kids is through the roof. And as adults, we plateau out. We level out. We stop. And we start letting all of our... Know our, our rational thinking and our common sense is referred to it, right? Um, right. Make the decision for us. Before long, we're dead, we're stuck. Here we are. To make ourselves feel good, and I know some of you guys are going to like this, <laughs> to make ourselves feel good in our kind of state of mediocrity, we'll read a book. Well, take that back. We'll order a book on Amazon. Most won't get read, but we felt good in the ordering. We will listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I don't little little motivation but the motivation is not really what we need, we need action not motivation, right, right? And we do these little pieces of things to appease the discomfort just to get us through the next day and it's uh, kind of predictable mm -hmm. it's like a band-aid 
months, years kick off, brother. And we're like, huh, what happened? You know? Mm. What the measuring stick for this? Somebody's like, wow, is he talking about me or not? Ask yourself this. I'm not saying you in general. Here's your parameter, man. Go, go back to the beginning, 2000, go back to the beginning of this year, January 1, and ask yourself how far you've come. What are your notable, trackable results for the year? We're more than a quarter into it. How far have you come in that time? Is it anywhere, does it resemble your goals at all, right? That'll answer the question for you, whether or not you're just sitting, standing still, passing time, or you're pushing the limits what you're capable of. Not comfortable stuff, I'll admit, mm -hmm. right? That's good stuff. Well, we yeah. Right. I'm. I can. Yeah, I can definitely relate with that. I'm sure a lot of people watching right now are like, "Man, why didn't I do that thing or start that business or you know buy that deal or whatever it is?" You know, it's all. It really all does come back to your comfort zone and your mindset. And you know, if if people could just push themselves into action more, put themselves in uncomfortable situations more often daily and make that a regular routine, that would at least put you on a track towards achieving goals, towards starting or growing your business to the next level, uh, whatever it is. It's a matter of regularly putting yourself in those uncomfortable situations so that you're just so used to it and you, that you know how to operate in those situations. And you also, anytime I, I know like I'm a little uncomfortable about something or I, you know, I'm feeling nervous about doing it, I'm like almost trying to talk myself out of doing it, uh, I know I got to do that thing, whatever that thing is, you know, and that's, I think, something that you, you learn over time. But if you're just more interested in being comfortable all the time, then you're not really going to experience that much growth. And that's pretty much what we're talking about. That's kind of what you were just saying. You've got to get used to being uncomfortable. Like when people go to the gym, you know, people do their, their set, they'll do 10 reps. And on the 10th rep, they're finishing it like nothing, right? They didn't, they didn't really push themselves and then wonder why they're not getting the results they want. Because you have to really work hard at the gym if you want results. You have to push yourself to the point where the last rep of the set, if it's the 10th one, the 12th one, whatever, you're squeezing it out like to the point where it's, you're failing. You're doing your set to failure and you're putting yourself in a really uncomfortable situation. You're working hard, you're sweating, it's stressful, you don't wanna do it, but you gotta convince yourself to do it anyway. And that is pretty much what you're talking about. And that could be related to business, life in general. And um, even, though, even though I know that, and I know I, I implement that at the gym and I implement that as much as I can in my life, I know that I'm not implementing it as much as I can. And I know there's areas that I could be getting more done. I could have pushed things forward faster um, in, in a variety of areas. Um, so ha just having this conversation is really helpful for me, to be honest. It's like, it's motivational, kind of realigns me back with, you know, I, I'm, uh, I'm a, like a subscriber, if you will, to the whole law of attraction and all of that, focusing on what you want, achieving your goals by, by staying focused on them and not letting the fear and the negative side of things hold you back and stop you. But it's an ongoing thing. Like you need repetition with this information. You can't just think about this once you know you watch the secret or you read the book about the law of attraction and now you think you've got it figured out that's not how it works you need ongoing uh repetition uh, hearing this stuff over and over implementing it over and over and then it becomes a normal natural response and a natural routine so yeah thank you for for everything we're talking yeah. about because this is helpful for let me, me. Just add a little pain on, let me add a little pain to it while we're here you know yeah it, 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 this is so true right um our world is evolving faster now than it ever has historically, like exponentially. The amount of change that's going on every single day is mind-boggling, right? Mm -hmm. No one knew how well that 2020 is going to be, and I've been saying this all, all year. 2021 is going to change even more. 2022 is going to be more evolutionary, right? Our unwillingness to grow mm -hmm. is going to create a very quick obsolescence in us. Meaning that we no longer have the liberty to stand still because everything is leaving us. And if we don't stay with it, we'll become obsolete, we'll become a thing of that. We'll drift off into nowhere. Like there will be a threshold where it's going to be really hard to try to catch up. That's why more than ever it's so important now. Now, we'd be remiss not to bring up this one word of habit, right? 
um, I can look at somebody, you can look at somebody, have a quick conversation with them, and know the habits that rule their world very quickly. Because our results are nothing more than a function of the habits that we live by. And mm -hmm. habits are the toughest part. That, that's the hard part. That's where behavioral change comes in, right? Changing a habit is not easy. Now, if someone's sitting there, you know, or Pat, what's the next step? The next step is to identify your own habits, two or three behaviors that you know damn well are in the way of your success. Stop, stop ignoring them. Stop making excuses for them. Stop drinking them away at the end of the day, right? Right. Address them. Or nothing in your life will change. Right? And the way I usually recommend going about this, man, is one, one, one keystone habit at a time. Pick one big thing, right? You mm -hmm. might be that type who avoids doing the hard things, right? And we all know when you avoid doing hard things, hard things get harder, right? Until they yep. develop into a, uh, into a big bonfire, then you have to address it, right? Right. Um, you might be that person. You might be a master procrastinator, right? And as a result, you're always late to the show, you know, figuratively speaking. Right. A, a, a habit that you know damn well is in your way um, and take it on, address it, figure out what the replacement habit is and just start getting to get, get all of that stuff. That kind of makes sense? That's a really good tip. Yeah, that's like good actionable uh, instruction right there that you know if people are listening to this it's like oh you know I don't I, I don't know what to do though you guys are talking about mindset but what do I actually do put yourself in uncomfortable situations or you don't avoid uncomfortable situations that you know you need to be in you know you need to do whatever it is and it's going to make you uncomfortable do it anyway don't listen to the fear and then um, and the other thing was quitting something basically you know whether I've heard this before like the, the quickest way to succeed is to quit. And it's like, what? What do you mean? Like, well, basically what that means is if you feel like you don't have the time or you feel like you're unable to do X, Y, Z, look at what you're doing now and see what maybe you can drop off of your, your daily, weekly habits. And you brought up a really good point. You know, I know, I know a lot of people, you know, they, they don't want to think about the fact that they're living a mediocre life and they know they can do better. They know they're underutilizing themselves. So they go and they drink every night or they, you know, do things on the weekend, whatever it is that they shouldn't be doing when they could just be spending their time on the thing that is going to make them the happiest in the end, right? They're, the thing that's making them maybe a little uncomfortable now, they're a little scared of it, is really the thing in the end that's going to make them most comfortable and most happy, but they're avoiding that for the short-term fix, the instant gratification and it's taken them off path from what they really want in their life for their family for their business and for those around them so basically you know put yourself in those uncomfortable situations that you know you should be in and start dropping things off your schedule that aren't really helping contribute toward towards your success right yeah let me add one more little thing mike so you know as entrepreneurs as business owners as investors you know we, we like to set goals, and goals usually have a, a, a dollar amount attached to them, which is cool. And dollars as, as, a, as a goal is, is okay in my mind because it's so trackable and measurable, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's a result of doing certain things correct, perfect, right? But the one that we got to connect with is not the results. Results are great, but goals are great for measuring, but they're not much, they don't do, they don't have an attached meaning to them. Like money has no meaning. Weight loss has no meaning. What we have to start asking ourselves is, what is the result of the result? You know, if, if you're in our investment space and your your goal is to have a certain amount of passive income, what is the result of that? And the result of that might be you providing security for the family, being able to sleep soundly at night, not having to worry about the uncertainty of the economy around you. Like those types of things. That starts putting meaning back in on. And I'll give you an example of how powerful this is. So the tool goes like this, right? The tool is this. Every behavior can be altered if we apply enough pain. And we just have to identify the pain in the right time to use it as a lever. There's no behavior that cannot be altered. I promise you that, right? And if you're sitting there, you say, well, how's it all work? This is where right real accountability comes in. The person that shouldn't be your accountability partner should be your spouse. Should be your best buddy. It's got to be someone who 
put so put aside how you freaking feel and is committed to getting you the result that you're committed to get and is willing to make you extremely ruthless and uncomfortable to get that's an accountability part and they don't take your excuse right but here, here's an example a guy comes into my gym and this is a typical somebody four years old says pat on I, i'd like to do 30 pounds I'm like, congratulations that's awesome good job why do you want to lose 30 pounds and he'll always start out with the fluff and you guys understand this is how our mind always goes well you know my pants don't fit me well anymore and i'm like yeah i get that he goes yeah but why do you want why do you want to lose weight and he'll go, well, actually, I don't like the way I look in, in the mirror anymore. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I understand that. But why do you want to lose the weight? And we'll go a little further, and, and you know, then, then we'll start transferring over, right? Well, you know, I just don't feel the way I used to, like, back in my 20s, man. My mojo, I, I used to have all this confidence. I don't have it anymore. Like, I understand that. But why do you really want to lose the weight? Like I'll dig and I'll dig up and then we'll get it. I know we got it. And they'll say something like, I this is just between you and me, right? I'm like, yeah, this is man to man, but I'll be honest with you. That spark in our relationship is just not there anymore. I'm starting to think that just you know, my I, I just don't turn on my wife anymore. I want my wife back. I'm like, you wanna fight back you wanna fight for your queen, don't you? But yeah, I'm like, you know what? That's what we sell. That's why our gym we charge what we charge because we sell results, but the result of the result, not losing 30 pounds. We're going to me- use the 30 pounds to measure progress for what you really want. This is this is the lever. 5.30 in the morning doesn't show up. Personal trainers work waiting there for them. What are six called out? Well, they might. You're not at the gym. Where you at? And then first thing, car, sleep, kid, child, dog, Mike, stop. One question, man. Are you giving up on your queen? You get a call, Mike, in the morning. Uh, Mike, where you at? And the excuses start flowing. And there, right, Mike, stop. It's one question, brother. Are you giving up on fighting back for your queen? Yes or no? Let me know, man. And before you answer, your ass is in your car driving yourself to the gym. Because you realize what's on the line. And this is something we have to appreciate as human beings. Everything we do today becomes a little easier to do tomorrow. And this works in our favor and it works against us, right? Nobody mm. ever woke up and said, one day I'm, I'm just gonna be fat. Nobody said that. But it's little behaviors stacked on top of each other, repeated over time, that were the causation of that. Nobody said I'm gonna be broke. But it's shitty spending habits, poor saving habits, poor investing habits, that repeatedly small pieces over time led up to, no one, when they got married, like, no one said, I'm gonna be divorced in five years. But it was that lack of attention and reinvesting in a relationship, little pieces at a time, that eroded the connection for long the divorce, right? Mm-hmm. We're in charge of this stuff. And every decision counts. And everything we do today becomes just a little easier to do tomorrow, right? We use that in our favor. And that's showing up at the gym. Everybody starts a gym. Very few people continue the gym. They start off robust, and one day they'll miss. And the next day it's a little easier to miss. Yeah. And the next day it's easier now it's just a thing in a pass. Right? Mm-hmm. We do this in our favor. Pick one behavior you want to alter. And the first thing in the morning, man, tell yourself how you're going to alter that all day long. Make it top of mind. And fight it, fight it, fight it. Because you're fighting with your old self. One of them's got to get blood. Be okay with that. Let your new self overtake you over self. Be okay with that conflict, right? That's where we start winning. That's where that mental toughness comes from. Absolutely. I could, I could relate to that for sure. Especially with the gym, you know, you, you, you start going regularly, you get into the habit of it, and now you feel like you just have to keep going regularly. But then when you start falling off, it gets easier to just keep missing a day. Ah, I missed a day last week. I'll just miss a day here, miss a day there. It's the same thing with everything, you know. How you do anything is how you do everything. You know, it's just, it's, it's like, it comes down to discipline, uh, work ethic, and all that good stuff. So I, I think we could sit here and talk about this for hours because I love the topic, and I obviously you do as well. I know you're really passionate about this stuff. Um, but uh, how can people, basically, how can people create a result the quickest way possible? From my perspective, it's, it's not going to happen that quick if you're doing it on your own. If I'm just the, the one that's managing it, you know, or if I'm the one that's holding myself accountable and I've gotten to where I'm at now and I got the results that I've gotten now and I'm not that happy with that, 
obviously the best way is is to have someone that's there to to help you hold yourself accountable like what you're saying with the gym you know that guy isn't going to really get the result that he wants on his own that's why people hire personal trainers so you know what's the quickest way to get that result is there any way that people can get more information or uh, you know, as we're wrapping the video up, what, what can people do to kind of implement this today and maybe even talk with you further about this? Yeah, so let's do this. Let me give you a really, really easy process. So you can use this if you're stuck in a rut, if you're up against a threshold, you can't punch through, you're, you're at a mental level, you're trying to start something, and for whatever reason, you can't get it started. This is the quickest way, Mike, right? This is go bam, and it goes like this, right? Super easy to do. Start out by getting crystal clear on the thing it is you want, right? Mm -hmm. If it's working out, it's working out. It's, I refer back to that because it's a measurable exercise, right? Um, so it's, it's, let's just use it fitness. You want to get fit, right? That's your objective. That's your goal. You had it with the way uh, you are and you want to get your body back. Great. Now, this is the exit. Make a, make a list in order. Everything you need to do in order for that to happen. And just let it roll, slow down. You get a big long list of stuff in order. It may start out with, I gotta find a gym, I gotta get sneakers, I gotta get new workout clothes, I gotta get like a Fitbit for my wrist, you know, you make all this list, <laughs> right. a calendar and schedule and get a babysitter and ah. Right? Think of all kinds but of stuff to do things. before you start doing the thing. Oh well, yeah, right. well, watch it, because those are the things that stop us from actually doing it, right? Yeah. So this is how we're gonna punch through all that crap, but put it down. Put it all on paper, everything you need to do, get it out of your mind on paper. now. From uh, from the beginning to the end, go now through the list and ask yourself this question: What is mission critical? What do I absolutely, positively have to do in order to reach these results? Right? Remember when you went when you started uh, wholesaling, right? You're trying to start a business. A lot of people are like, oh man, I got to form an LLC and I got to get an entity. I do all this stuff before I don't sell. No, go freaking call someone. Just right. Stop, right. That's it. So that was that would be something that would get crossed off. Go well, back to the list, cross off everything that's not mission critical. Do you need new workout clothes to start working out? Hell no. Do you even need a gym? Hell no. We're talking about starting, right? So cross out everything that's not mission critical. Now, and here's the goal. So starting at the end of the list, making right the last thing before you know achieving the goal, the result, the outcome. Work your way backwards down that list. Stop at the very first thing that you can do right now. And you will find that you're only about a third of the way down the list, which means you cut two thirds of the line, brother. And you turn around and you begin. And you use that as your as your next steps towards the goal that you want. That, does that make sense? What, what Absolutely. I there? Absolutely. So if it's like with business, Focus on the thing that's going to generate revenue first, right? Don't go and set up a, a website on some free website building thing just so you have the website. That website's not going to do anything for you. You are the thing that's going to do something to create a result and to get actual uh, results and success. And I literally did that. That's what I did when I was in, in the beginning of my real estate investing, wholesaling uh, business or career or whatever. I set up a website and I knew I'm like, what am I doing right now? I'm like, oh, I just need the website. It'll be good to have. And meanwhile, I hadn't had a deal yet, but I'm over here setting up a website. Meanwhile, my coach at the time told me the same exact thing of what you're saying. He said, don't do that. You don't need a website. You don't need business cards. You need buyers and you need deals. So those are the two things that you should be putting effort towards. Nothing else. But you know, people, they, they avoid the difficult things that I did the same exact thing and I've done it before. So, And then yeah. that's exactly what the exercise does. All it does is clean out our excuses. That's all it's all important. We no longer, there's nothing left, man. And it, now, you, now you, just, you look yourself in the mirror. You really want it that much, right? And, and appreciate when you ask yourself that question that the answer is not in words, it's in action. It's moving towards it. Because standing still means you're going to be still there again tomorrow. That ain't going to change. Nope. Yeah, absolutely. Well, this was uh, really good, really informative stuff. If you guys <laughs> like this video, like the video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. 
Patrick, is there any way people can learn more about what you are teaching? I know you've got a lot of students that come to you. Uh, is, there, is there some kind of course or something that they could go and look at for more information? Maybe we could put a link yeah, in the description. So, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. PatrickFreeCourt.com is my website. Easy, on, easy to find on Facebook, and uh, we do we put a lot of this content out there. And what I care to say, you might just jump in and start listening, pay attention, you know, and you'll gravitate to, to what you need out of this, you know. Um, but yeah, I put a lot of content on on, on uh, Facebook on that stuff, and we do have a lot of cool programs based on what it is and where people are at, and what they want to be done. And so, you know. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and doing this with us. I definitely plan on having you guys having you on again. So if anyone that's watching would also like for us to talk more about this topic, mindset, and just breaking through barriers, mental toughness, and you'd like to hear more about that, comment on the video and let us know. Um, but until next time, I hope you guys enjoyed it and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Thank you again, Patrick, uh, for joining and sharing everything. That was really awesome. So thank you very much. I yeah, appreciate you having me, guys, and man, thank you all. Thank you. Absolutely. And thank you, guys. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.